For the past month, I've been using my PS Portal every day. Every single day. Can you imagine it? That was a struggle, and I found it to be a really strange device. I like its portability, convenience, but at the same time, there are a couple of caveats that make it somewhat a strange buy. So should you get one of these? Let me explain. I'm a huge fan of handhelds. I had a PSP when I was a kid, played a ton of games on it, loved it to pieces. Then I got a PS Vita, but this one kind of disappointed me. Impressive from a technical standpoint, but complete failure in terms of games. I still have it to this day. After that, there were not that many decent handhelds that I wanted. Eventually, I gave up and bought myself an Asus ROG Ally. The review of that thing is on the channel. Be sure to check it out. And in that video, I call the just released PS Portal a competitor. <laughs> oh boy, I was wrong. The PS Portal turned out to be a totally different device. Not as great as you wanted it to be, but definitely better than it could have been. For example, I haven't doubted the design and ergonomics of this thing for a moment, and in all the time of using it, I haven't noticed a single drawback of this design. It's basically a DualSense controller chopped in two with an 8-inch display slab between them. To some it may look bizarre and janky, but I see it as one of the biggest advantages of this handheld. The way Sony designed this thing makes it feel different from the competitors. The backside has an uneven shape, it is thicker in the middle and gets progressively thinner to the edges of the display, after which it seamlessly morphs into a controller. This makes it really comfortable to hold, very ergonomic. The ROG Ally, for example, has a flat back which makes the handheld feel thicker than it really is. PS Portal fits rather nicely in my hand and even after a couple hours of playing on it, I don't feel fatigue. Trust me, this is very important, especially for handhelds. And it's relatively light, making it much easier to hold for a long period of time. The battery won't really allow for that, but that's a different story. And also the thumbsticks are a bit smaller here than in a normal DualSense controller, but the buttons are just as big and just as clicky, no need to get used to them. Just turn the device on, connect and start playing. Well, it's not always that simple. Before I tell you about the gaming experience in PS Portal, I need to say a few words about the display. It's really nice. It is a 1080p IPS panel that is enough for this type of device. I wish it was OLED with HDR support, but sadly it is not. It's bright enough to play at home and outside on a cloudy day, but not too bright so that the California beach gaming gang could be happy. Also, sometimes the screen cannot properly handle highlights and some parts of the image simply become the brightest white this display can put out. Maybe if I didn't have the TV with HDR to compare it to, it would have been fine. But Sony clearly needs to do some additional work on the dynamic range of the transmitted video stream. But how does it feel to play on it? Well, it depends on where you play and what you play. At home, I have a pretty fast Wi-Fi router averaging around 800 megabits per second. The PS5 is connected to this Wi-Fi and so is the PS Portal. And although Sony recommends connecting PS5 via the Ethernet cable, the Wi-Fi works just fine. When I'm playing off of my home Wi-Fi, most of the time the image is nice and crisp, with no noticeable input lag. But to get results like this, I basically have to sit a couple meters away from the Wi-Fi router, and even so, sometimes I see dropped frames. It's not like FPS falls into 20s, no, no, no. It's more like the handheld is skipping a frame once in a while. I notice that every time, and although it doesn't increase the input lag, sometimes it can be pretty annoying, especially when I'm sitting a couple meters from the console itself. On the PS5, connected to the TV, the image is buttery smooth, no dropped frames, so it has to be something to do with the way the data is transmitted. If I go outside and connect the PS Portal to my iPhone's hotspot, the input lag gets a bit higher, but not too bad to make things unplayable. What I also noticed, both when playing in the same Wi-Fi network or from afar, is that the game you play has a direct influence on the experience. For example, when I play relatively simple games like Astro's Playroom, everything works great and there are almost no dropped frames. But as soon as I launch something more intensive like Spider-Man or Red Dead Redemption 2, things take a bad turn. The heavier and more graphic intensive the game is, the more dropped frames there will be. Maybe your Wi-Fi connection will be much faster than mine and it will stop this thing from happening, but I haven't managed to find a way to fix that. But if you think that you can take PS Portal with you on the trips, you're wildly mistaken. Get ready to get your expectations shattered. 
Recently, I went to Dubai and left my PS5 in Europe, connected to really fast Wi-Fi, and in my Airbnb in Dubai, the Wi-Fi was also much faster than what Sony claims is needed for the optimal connection, so it seems like everything should just work, right? Well, not so much. It was pretty much unplayable. The frames were dropping all the time and the input lag was simply unbearable. It was truly an awful experience, the one that makes you want to break stuff. You know how they say that a bad internet is worse than no internet at all? Here it was basically the same story. It would have been better if I didn't even try playing PS Portal rather than playing in such an awful way. I think that PS Portal is not a travel device. It is for people who want to play in the same city their PS5 is in. Maybe during a break at work, a boring online company meeting, maybe in between lectures at the uni, or just while sitting on the loo. The less distance the signal from the PS Portal has to cover, the better, and within one city everything should be okay. The signal just goes to the local internet provider and back to your house, a relatively short distance, but as the distance gets bigger, the data has to travel more between different internet providers and networks, possibly even losing some information along the way. So no, don't try playing Peace Portal when you're a couple thousand miles away from home. For situations like this, you better get yourself a Steam Deck or ROG Ally. And that's where we should start talking about remote play because it's been one of the main arguments of people who got angry with my ROG Ally review where I said the PS Portal was a possible competitor. So is the remote play just as good as the PS Portal? No, it's not. Now, I know, I know, you wanted me to say that PS Portal is a useless piece of plastic that can be replaced by your phone, but it's not like that, at least not quite like that. PlayStation Remote Play, when the PS Portal just launched, was indeed an alternative, but as the time went on, Sony did some tweaking and adjustment, and right now the quality of gaming experience in PS Portal is noticeably better than through Remote Play. Remote Play has the image falling apart sometimes, with pixelation and artifacts, and the input lag is just much worse. Not unplayable, but definitely more noticeable. Looks like Sony eventually did some additional optimization and the quality of streaming got better, for the first five minutes or so, you may encounter some dropped frames and artifacts, but after some time it all kind of clicks and starts working great. Also, PS Portal is just more convenient, you connect once and it remembers your PS5, and then when the PS5 is in the rest mode, I can turn it on with one press of a button and start playing. The only thing that is objectively bad in PS Portal is the speakers. Take a listen. Once he's completing your mission, dare I hope this alliance has some staying power after all. The sound is just all quiet and mushy, like from a cheap smartphone. Well, not cheap, but you get the idea. I wish I could say that it is easily fixable with a pair of nice Bluetooth headphones, but sadly PS Portal doesn't support any Bluetooth headphones except official Sony ones. The ones specifically made for this handheld. I find it simply outrageous that even the Sony made WXM5 that costs more than PS Portal can be used with it. Well, luckily there is still is a headphone jack and there are no limitations for wired headphones. Overall, I'd say that for $200, it's a nice accessory to have, albeit not the necessary one. If you have some extra cash to spare and you want to play games, for example, when TV is occupied with your family members watching movies, this might be a viable option for you. Or if you want to play at work and you work not too far from home, as a proof of concept, this is not a bad device. I think that if Sony decides to release the second version of the PS Portal and fixes all the issues it has, it might just be the next best thing. So here is my list of everything that Sony needs to fix. Add support for Bluetooth headphones, OLED display, better Wi-Fi, or an option to connect directly to the console like it was done on Nintendo Wii U. And what do you think? Is the PS Portal worth buying? Share your opinions in the comments. And if it is not something you want to buy, maybe ROG Ally will be a better choice for you. So be sure to check out our long-term review of it and see you there. Peace out.